Hi everyone, I am Ray Gaucher, and welcome to Shekels for Your Thoughts on Truth and Testimony, the broadcast. If you're viewing on YouTube or Rumble, hello, you guys can obviously see what I'm doing, but if you're listening to us on our podcast, um, you can actually watch this video on our YouTube and our Rumble page, but there isn't really any visuals for you to see. So this is why we're providing this on all the platforms, uh, both YouTube, both video and podcast. And if you are listening to us on our podcast, welcome. It's such a pleasure to have you listening. I really felt compelled to put this uh, Shuckles for Your Thoughts together because today is the 8th. And if you're listening to this uh, several weeks later, or even a year later, today is the 8th of April, and they had the solar eclipse. And it was the total solar eclipse, which means that the moon went in front front of the actual sun, providing a really incredible view for a lot of people in North America. It first started off in Mexico and made its way up, yeah, up the east kind of the east and made its way into Canada. I didn't actually get a chance to see the, the complete eclipse. I did see a little bit of it uh, while I was in Arizona because that's where we're actually recording this. Uh, it was actually kind of neat. Uh, you had to take a picture of it. You can't really look at it with the naked eye because it just you know, looking into the sun is never a good idea. So I seen a little bit of it, little bit of it rather, um, kind of on the sun. It was kind of neat to see that, but it would have been really nice to actually see the real thing. And apparently, the next time we'll be viewing that will be again in another 20 years. So, Lord willing, I'll still be here. Maybe next time, I'll make it a point that I can see it wherever it might be. But the reason what compelled me to do this shekels for your thoughts regarding its fellowship we need fellowship and that's the title of this shekels for your thoughts is because i seen how many people were gathering together to watch this eclipse there were stadiums that were filled all along the path of where the moon was going to be uh casting its shadow indianapolis um places in uh, Texas and that and just thousands of people just showing up just to view this and I'm like wow and you can just hear the excitement of everybody getting together and the cheering and the laughter and everyone was um, high-fiving each other and and people were just there was real fellowship there people were just having a good time they had their uh, I'm sure they had their concession stand set up. This was a huge event. It didn't last long. In each city, it lasted four and a half minutes. But just the anticipation, people gathering together, how exciting that was. And there's been so much division everywhere in the world. Just this one little event brought so many people together. And it really showed me how important it is for us to have fellowship. And God tells us that we should be fellowshipping. Now, for myself as a truck driver, I spend a lot of time out on the road alone. Uh, on the road alone, if you didn't hear that. I kind of mixed my word there. I apologize for that. I have a little bit of a phone network where I fellowship with some of my Christian brothers and sisters out there. But it doesn't really take the place of church. Obviously, church is very, very important, and uh, we need to have that. And uh, for those of you that are viewing, I just want to turn on a little bit of light there because it's starting to get dark where I'm at. So pardon my hand there. But I wanted to just emphasize on the importance of a fellowship that we need it, especially during these last days that we're living in. We need that encouragement. We need that lifting up. Um, also, fellowship is really important. This is why it's so important to assemble, to go to church. Uh, for example, Hebrews 10, 24 to 25. I'm actually going to read that out of the uh, King James. It says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and be and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. 
I'll read this in a different translation. Sometimes King James can be a little confusing. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all that the more as you see the day approaching. It's this is something we should be getting excited about going to church. If you're not a church goer and you're a believer, perhaps you're a new believer, it's very difficult to really get excited about your faith and about God's doing when you are doing this alone. I remember back in the day when I became a Christian when I was 18 years old, I joined up with a church, a church of believers. It was a wonderful experience. Also, the company that I worked for. Uh, they were all Christian men. The family I lived with that I went to go live with, it was a husband and wife and their kids, and they rented a room for me downstairs. And it, it was an incredible experience. It was beautiful, wonderful fellowship. And I think to myself, I would do anything to go back to that. That was no doubt some of the best years of my life when I had the opportunity to share fellowship not only with a, an amazing family, a loving family, a great congregation, the church that we went to was amazing. Um, it was one of those churches where everybody knew everybody. Everyone shook your hand, and and uh, it was really nice. And not to mention, um, we would get together on Wednesdays and do uh, like a house meeting, like a house, it was called like a... Um, a it was kind of called a home group. And we would get together and just do Bible studies and it was just really really nice and I can't encourage people enough <laughs> if you're involved with a church get plugged in get real plugged into a church it is so important um, I wish I could go back to those days I really do I wish I could go back to those days and maybe one day again I'll have an opportunity to share a little bit of fellowship <coughs> excuse me with uh, some amazing people again um, on a regular basis. First John chapter 7 says, But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. So we're supposed to fellowship with one another, other Christians, other brothers and sisters. Acts chapter 2 42 says they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer I think it's quite evident that we need friends in our life we need fellowship in our life that we can pray together that we can break bread together that we can um, confess to one another as the Bible says we are to confess to one another the exact sins in our life, the natures of our wrongs, the things that we have done. Um, that is a true confessional. You can't really do that on your own. You need to have fellowship to do that. Again, they devoted themselves to the apostles. They had fellowship with the apostles. And this is mentioning in Acts, of course, during that time. They devoted themselves to the apostles. They had fellowship together. Philippians chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 says, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in Spirit and one of mind. Again, these are scriptures telling us that we have to be uh, involved in, we have to be fellowshipping with one another. We need to be strengthening one another. Um, there is a wonderful joy about going to church and just being in the midst of other people. Kind of like what happened today when everyone was together when the eclipse happened it was they were kind of like it was almost like a fellowship but this is the most important fellowship one another fellowshipping our amazing god fellowshipping with our amazing god first corinthians 1 9 says god is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his son jesus christ our lord again he's instructing us to call 
each other into fellowship with his son. Ephesians chapter 4, 3 says, Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Some might say, oh, there's not a lot of scripture telling us that we need to be together in fellowship, going to church, etc. Oh, there's plenty. There is plenty. Here's another one, Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Carry each other's burdens. How do you do that if you're constantly alone and you're not involved in scripture? Or should I say you're not involved? Uh, in fellowship. It's, oh my gosh, it is so incredibly important. There was another one here that I seen. John, uh, let's try this one. John, First John, uh, chapter 1, verse 3. We proclaim to you that we have seen and heard that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Just want to make sure I didn't read that one already. So again, I can't encourage you guys enough that we really should be united and be fellowshipping with one another, those that are in the body of Christ. These are very, very testing days that we're living in now. I really, truly believe that we're living in the last days, and I think a lot of people would agree with that. And I can't think of a better time to have that fellowship. If you have a prayer family, if you have prayer partners, if you have family members, we really got to unite. We really got to get together. It is very important to spend time alone in the Word and with the Lord. Absolutely. But there is also time, as instructed by God Himself, that we need to fellowship with one another. We need to be with one another during these difficult times to strengthen each other and Bible studies are so nice to have when you're doing them alone absolutely but how more of a revelation is it when you're doing a study in a group of people with a group of people and they are um, seeing something that you didn't see and you get to share that with them it is just amazing so friends the reason why I am doing this broadcast is to encourage you to get involved with more fellowship Um, especially during these times we need to be able to pray with one another we need to be able to break bread with one another it is so important don't be alone during these days don't be alone and during these days if you do spend a lot of time alone if you don't have a whole lot of friends in your life then you need to reach out well i'm not really the type of person to reach out well do it do it. Get involved in a church. Find a really good, biblically sound church in your neighborhood. If you're not, if you're not sure where to find one, then do a search. Get a hold of a ministry and ask them, do you know any really good, biblically sound churches in my area? There's plenty of resources to find them. And then get involved with that church. Talk to the pastor. Let them know, I want to get involved. I want to get plugged in. It is so important. There's really no excuse to be alone. Even if you're out on, I mean, look at me, I'm a truck driver. I'm on the road alone all the time. But I still have a bit of a prayer chain. I still have uh, people I can call if I need I mean, I really should be plugged in more with more people, but there's only so many people you can be plugged in when you're out on the highway. So I have at least five solid people I know I can call if I want prayer or I can pray for. And I do have other people as well that I can talk to. So friends, let me encourage you. Get plugged in and let's fellowship a lot more. If you are listening to this on the podcast, be sure to uh, follow us on this podcast platform that you're follow- that you're listening on, and uh, not to miss any more uh, uploads from Truth and Testimony. And if you're viewing on YouTube or on uh, Rumble, subscribe today and hit the notification tab. And also like or comment because that also helps the algorithms and helps other people find our channel. When you actually like a video. And we only ask you to like it if you do like it. Or when you comment on it. Or when you subscribe to it. Or when you share it with another person. It tells YouTube, hey, this obviously it was a good video. Let's put it on other people's 
feeds. So it actually, when you do like it, and when you do um, subscribe to it, and when you do comment or share it, you're actually sharing that video to more people than you think. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed this edition of Shekels for Your Thoughts. Until next time, blessings in the name of Yeshua. Bye for now.